Hi guys, and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can use the AWS tools for PowerShell to create an S3 bucket. Now, once you create the S3 bucket, that's going to be kind of your placeholder for where you can upload files and download files from. So if you are following along over at github.com slash cbttrevor and you've cloned that repository locally, we're going to go ahead and open up the 03 directory here where we are going to learn about creating an S3 bucket. So the AWS tools for PowerShell, as we looked at in the previous video, has a command called new S3 bucket. So in PowerShell, by convention, most commands have a verb followed by a noun indicating what action you'd like to perform and what resource or object you'd like to perform that action against. So we're going to instantiate a new S3 bucket. Now also keep in mind that if you are following along and you have not yet set up your AWS credentials file, you will need to set up your credentials in the, the .aws directory in your home directory under the credentials file. And we have a separate skill that talks specifically about how to do that. So go ahead and watch that skill and then you can come back here and resume. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the new S3 bucket command. So I'm actually gonna fire up my Windows terminal here and then I'll run the PowerShell get help command which is just built directly into PowerShell. And then we'll specify the name parameter and specify the command that we would like to get help for. So in this case, I am getting help for the new S3 bucket command. So we'll go ahead and specify that here and hit enter. And so this is basically going to grab all the help for new S3 bucket and display it to our terminal here. And then we will be able to see the different parameters that are supported by this particular command. All right, so as you can see, the new S3 bucket command has a single required parameter here. And the way that we know that this parameter is required is because the parameter name is in brackets and the value is not in brackets. So basically we have to specify a string value that we would like to pass into the bucket name parameter for the new S3 bucket command. So let's go ahead and type new S3 bucket. So we're gonna go ahead and invoke this command. And then if you put a dash to specify a parameter and hit tab, that will autocomplete the first parameter here, which is just bucket name. And then go ahead and think of a name for a bucket that you would like to. I'll go ahead and use Trevor West 2 Bacon. And once I hit enter, you'll see that it returns the new bucket to me. And we also get back a timestamp when that bucket was created. Now you might have noticed that there are a bunch of other parameters available on this command. So we actually have a parameter here called canned ACL name. And you might be wondering, well, what is a canned ACL? And what that basically is, is if we tab complete that value, we'll actually be able to see some of the different permissions that we can assign to a new S3 bucket once we create it. So if I take a look at our new S3 bucket command here, and then add on another parameter, and just hit tab again to autocomplete that parameter name, you'll see that we get back canned ACL name. And then if I put a space after that parameter name and start hitting tab, this is a parameter that I can actually autocomplete because it has a predefined set of supported values for it. So I can do things like set no ACL so nobody has permission to it. I can make it a private bucket or, or I can even do things like public read or public read write access. Now, if you're creating an S3 bucket that is only going to have confidential data inside of it that nobody else should see except the owner of the AWS account, then you'll definitely want to avoid specifying any additional permissions on your bucket. But in case you are creating a bucket where you'd like to maybe share some files out of, then you could do something like a public read and ACL. And I'll go ahead and create a second bucket here using that ACL. And you'll see that we've created a new bucket that now has public read permissions on it. Now there's another command that allows us to examine the ACLs. And if so, if we run the get command command on the S3 commands in the AWS PowerShell.NET Core module, you'll be able to see that there is actually a get S3 ACL command that allows us to view the access control list for a particular bucket. So let's take a look at the help for that. So I'll do help on get S3 ACL. And now you can see we've got a bucket name parameter here, and we also have an optional key parameter. So if you wanted to look at a specific object in that bucket and examine the ACL on it, you could do that. But what we're gonna do for now is just run get S3 ACL on a particular bucket. So I'll run get S3 bucket just to confirm that I'm getting my bucket names correct here. And then I'll run get S3 ACL 
first on the Trevor West to Bacon bucket that I created. And what you'll notice about the output here is that we can we have an owner property, and then we have a grants property that that contains the actual access control entries for this bucket. So if I were to wrap this in parentheses here and type dot grants, you'll see that we get back a list of grant permissions here. So we have a grantee that has full control permission. And if we drill into that just one step further and take a look at the grantee property, you'll see that we get back the user that actually has access, full control to this particular bucket. Now this differs somewhat slightly from if we look at the bacon two bucket where we gave public read access. So if I look at the grants property on the ACL for the bacon two bucket, instead of just the bacon without the two bucket, you'll see that I actually have two access control entries in here. So the first one is of course that full control where my user account has full control to that bucket. And the second is where the public has read access. So I can drill into that and do dot, grab the second access control entry by indexing it into index one and then take a look at the grantee property. And that grantee property is basically a URI that is referencing all users, basically meaning that anybody who wants to can read objects from this bucket. So now that we've created a bucket and we've figured out how to inspect the access control list on it, let's go ahead and take a look at how to write some actual data into our S3 bucket. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.